parts of uh, press conferences when we get to meet the uh, managers and the trainers and the fighters themselves. And uh, this might be as good as the uh, main event on Saturday night. So let me bring up first uh, somebody I've known for quite a few years, and he's the uh, entertaining pride of Houston, Texas, Mr. James Prince. Mike. <clears throat> I'd like to thank God for this opportunity, uh, HBO, uh, the commitment, the sacrifices they made to uh, bring this fight to us, uh, the MGM grad, Mr. Stern. We uh, appreciate Rock Nation, you know, our promoter, uh, Jay Z, Dez, all of those that's in the background support Mike. And definitely like to thank Mike. He's been on the line of duty doing a great job. Uh, Antonio Leonard is in the house. Uh, we appreciate you, Tony, and all that you do. And, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, I feel really grateful for this opportunity. And I speak on behalf of Team War. Uh, we've been looking forward to this day. Uh, it's here, and I'm going to deal with the elephant in the room. This is uh, Russia versus the United States of America. Uh. Uh. Russia versus the United States of America. And uh, in my opinion, uh, the best of Russia can't beat the best of the United States of America. And nothing. Uh. Yeah, it is what it is. The best of Russia can't beat the United States of America and nothing. And that's what's happening. You know, we have a Russian fighter over here, a Kovalov. Hey, we respect your fight game. You're a great fighter. And you remind me of Goliath. We have uh, my man Andre Ward over here, who I consider David. I don't know if y'all understand that story, go live and, and date it. But that's what we're dealing with right here. And uh, come Saturday night, we're going to have an opportunity to see the modern day David, which is Andre Ward, defeat Go Live. Now, I, I mentioned this in the last uh, press conference in New York, and Miss Duper. She, she said to me uh, when she got up to the podium that Andre Ward don't have a sword. That's correct. Or a slingshot. Either one of them. Or a stone. But she missed the real substance of the story where David and Goliath is concerned. She, she missed the anointing that is on David. You know, his obedience. You know what I mean? All of these different spiritual realms uh, where David was concerned. And he, he's gonna fight the SOG. You know what I mean? That's the son of God, if y'all didn't know. That's Andre Ward. So, no, we don't have a sword. So we're not, we can't cut his head off and, and raise it up as David did, like Andre Ward gonna raise the belt up on Saturday night. But we plan on beating the head up so bad until uh, you'll need all type of instruments to fix it. Thank you. Well, let's stick with the uh, with Team Ward right now, and I'd like to bring up you know both of these fighters. They both have really, really outstanding trainers. So let me bring up the trainer for Andre Ward, Mr. Virgil Hunter. Great to be here. Glad to be participating in an event like this, as I said yesterday, I've been saying. And um, glad to see everybody here. I've been here for many of fights and see the media on the field for this event. It really makes me feel good. I'd like to thank Peter Nelson and HBO and their staff 
my rap a lot family. I'd like to thank Mr. Stern for all he's done, provided. And I'd also like to thank the press, no matter who you choose to win, who you choose to uh, push forward. That's your uh, prerogative, and you most certainly deserve it. I didn't really want to come up um, too much today. You know, I turned 63 last Wednesday. And, um, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's no secret now that, you know, I've worked with youth, all of them, most of all of my professional career. Um, I was just reflecting last night on, I can remember some young men, 13, that I knew and buried them at 15. And, you know, I've seen it all. Uh, so it does have an emotional effect on me when it comes to young men. And, you know, I realize that even the age of Sergey and Andre, the young men, to me. And um, watching that, my fight, um, and where what Sergey had to endure, um, it, it really touched me. And I'm not up here uh, just saying this, just to be saying it. It really touched me deeply um, and you know my heart went out to it and of course everybody now knows Andre's background um, it's been eight weeks and a lot of things have come out and we've chose to keep quiet uh, for the various reasons that we need to keep quiet because things fly around pretty quick and until you can get everybody in the room it's always a, a mystery to what actually is really going on. I had the great pleasure yesterday of doing a ring debate with uh, Coach Jackson. And uh, even though he has sniped me and questioned you know, my credentials, which he's entitled to, I walked away from that debate with uh, respect for him. I never had disrespect for him. But I had more respect for him, so I was sort of alluding to yesterday that I, you know, I was troubled by a few things, some things that I had observed uh, in the camp, whether Sergey listens to Coach Jackson or not, uh, when it comes to you know doing things his way. Um, so imagine getting up this morning and um, realizing within myself that. Uh, we heard about, you know, the troubles in Russia and the, how he was, Sergei was, you know, overwhelmed with family and friends and things and selling the tickets and things like that and, and it didn't allow him to put on the performance that was expected of him. Although um, we do have to give Sh Isaac Shalomba a lot of credit with the attitude to come to win. We do have to give him a portion of the credit. I think what disturbs me most is, is that um, Coach Jackson didn't get there until a week before the fight. Huh. Now, Ms. Dougal, with all respect in New York, introduced Coach Jackson as the best trainer in boxing. And I'm trying to figure out in my mind, why would you leave the best trainer in boxing behind until a week before the fight? So maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know, but that seems to be the case, and um, it's not airing out trash, it's leaving questions to be asked. I can't answer it, and if I am wrong, then I'll even feel better about it. As I said yesterday, the respect that I gained from Coach Jackson yesterday, and being in the coaching fraternity is a very difficult fraternity, and so I tend to align myself with every coach because it's so tough. So that's the case. Also, um, and you know, this is real, it's not easy to get out because again, looking at how Sergey lost his dad man, early, all these things affect you when you're young. You know, I never came up around my real father and I often wondered. You know, what would I have been? Maybe if he'd been there, I'm thankful for how things turned out. I had a great stepdad, and um, 
he was really the only dad that I knew. Um, and this is a 50-50 fight. But the pay doesn't reflect that. Um, how does the challenger get a boatload of money, but the champion don't? I don't understand that. I think those are some questions that need to be asking. Everybody here is saying, well, well, you're doing it. No, it's not like that. Uh, I'm really torn by it because, again, until you've been in my shoes and have worked with young men and seen the sufferings of things, um, you never know. But I don't understand it. Uh, maybe he was fine with it. Or maybe it's not true. And that would be the best news I can get. But, again, I might just be blowing smoke and rattling, and what I'm saying, rattling up here, uh, because it is something that really bothered me, and called me weird, or whatever you want to call me, or later on, if you have to remark on what I've said today, you're entitled to remark the way you want to remark. But, um, if everybody's fine with it, then I'm fine with it, but it did bother me. Getting to the fight, it's, I, I believe it's going to be a great fight. And I believe that Sergey is everything that they say he is. He's a dangerous opponent. He's coming intending to win. Uh, we've seen him do things to opponents that they, when they step in the ring, they shiver. And um, I think that he carries that persona with him justifiably. So really it's up to us to, uh, you know, dilute that uh, situation. Um, so I'm looking forward to November 19th. And I'd like to see all these, you know, Sergey's 33 now, Andre's 32. You know, this is an age in boxing when you're looking for your exit strategy. So when you make a remark that there was a time when fighters were courageous and not cynical businessmen. I think that takes us back to the 40s or the 50s. You know, you fight, I'll do your business, and then when you finish fighting, you look up and you don't have no money. But in the meantime, my grandkids going to college on your blood, sweat, and tears. And in the meantime, you can take a bow at the next fight 10 years from now and um, everybody tell you how great you were and how you they enjoyed your fighting but you don't have no money. So I encourage all fighters to be simple businessmen. Don't be a robot. And it's easy from the foreign countries to get that type of fighter and pay them what you want to pay them and they should be happy with it. And if that's the case, so be it. But I just encourage them all to be businessmen. And you have, you have a right to be a businessman. In other sports, athletes are businessmen. You're no longer robots. It just saddens me because I came through the civil rights era. I came through all during that time. Uh, I'm a very avid historical reader of all the major events that uh, took place in Russia from Nikita Khrushchev to Stalin to Brezhnev, uh -huh. the Putin, I remember the Bay of Pigs very well. My father was on the USS Ranger, the aircraft carrier, and I can remember my mother telling us, you know, it could possibly be a war, you know, a nuclear war, and, and here you are, nine years old, ten years old, and you're hearing that, that's a spooky, spooky thing. So, I became very entrenched in Soviet history um, as a result of that. Um, and I, I love the Spetsnaz, you know, some of the toughest cats you ever see in your life. And the story of how they developed in war, you know, World War II with Hitler, how they had to go and disarm that big gun that he brought within firing range of uh, the Soviet territory. So it's a lot of historical things that accompany that. And I'm sorry if I got off track a little bit from the fight. Um, sometimes when I get emotional about certain things, um, 
you know, I can go here and go there. But I would encourage all promoters, you know, treat your fighters fairly. Don't hoodwink them. And don't keep them robots. And don't keep them, uh, encourage them and teach them how to be businessmen. And, um, you know, if, if you have a champion, he deserves a champion's uh, ration. Again, hopefully, I'm wrong. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's bring up a gentleman who hasn't heard this word in, in quite a while in his career. The word is challenger, because the titles are on the line and he's challenging for them. But as we all know, this fight really is about well, somebody's always got to go. Two undefeated fighters. This is about who moves up into that position of pound for pound, the best in the world. And that's probably what you're going to get at the end of this fight. So let's bring up the official challenger, undefeated since he was 13 years old, captured Olympic gold, his record now 30 victories, 15 wins by knockout, two-time world champion Andre Ward. Thank everybody that's here today, the media, uh, all my sponsors, uh, obviously uh, MGM Grand and the great team that put this fight together, uh, HBO. Uh, man, I was off to the side trying to mind my own business and uh, Kathy Dewey woke me up. You know, <laughs> she started talking. I don't know why she keeps doing that, but it's interesting that the ones that are not getting that ring are the ones that are doing the most talking. Uh -huh. They're not feeling those punches. And uh, so she can keep doing what she's doing. Um, you know, I love it. You know, that's what a big promotion is all about. That's what a big fight is all about. We're not supposed to like each other. You know, his side has been doing a lot of talking. Uh, and that's fine. We love it. It's okay. It's not our first rodeo. We've been down this road before. Um, we don't always respond right away because. And sometimes our silence is misinterpreted as we don't we don't understand or we don't get it. No, we get it. We watch. We take notes. But in the meantime, we keep working. And then we produce come fight night. That's that's what we specialize in. So all the talking is great. I love it. Um, but no one thing. I'm not taking no mess come Saturday night. I'm going to be there. Thank you very much. Well, it's time to hear from Team Kovalev. And here to start things off for Team Kovalev is the uh, manager for Sergey, Mr. Aegis Klimas. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Thank you, everybody, to be here. Media, uh, without you, nobody will know where we're going and what we're doing. So thank you very much, media. Wanted to thank our promoter main events. Kathy Duva did a very, very good job bringing us to this stage to this big fight. Uh, MGM, a uh, very, very uh, good host. Thank you very much. Appreciate it being here. Um, HBO, pay-per-view, showing that ball to the whole audience in America. Um, I hope I didn't miss uh, anybody else. Of course, I'm very, very proud to represent one of the best fighters in the world. and. Uh, Hopefully that we're going to see that on Saturday night, who is a pound-for-pound -pound, uh, boxer. I hate when trainers, managers, promoters start talking what it's going to be and how it's going to be beat each other because we are the ones who are going to be stepping out of the ring. None of the promoters, none of the managers, none of the trainers can understand what is going to happen in the ring. It's only two warriors who is going to be in the ring. And today we have two best light heavyweight fighters in the world who is going to be showing Saturday night who is a pound for pound fighter. Enjoy Saturday night will bring us, I hope, the best show we've been seeing in a year. Thank you very much. Grace. Well, like I said, we have two great trainers in opposing camps and uh, let's bring up the trainer for Sergei Kovalev former world champion, Mr. John David Jackson.
Hello everyone, it's good to see the press here. Um, I want to thank two different groups. First of all, I want to thank main events. I mentioned the women that main events plus my man Joe are truly some of the greatest people in the world. If you want to find a, a promotional company that, that treat you fairly, all fighters and, and, and across the board and give you what you deserve in boxing, go see them. Number two, I'd like to thank all the press that is, that is out here for this event. It's truly wonderful to see some of the people that, with their words, either can help boxers swim or sink. And your words help a lot. Sometimes some of you don't help us as much as we like to be helped. But it's so grateful, to, I'm so grateful to see that all of you out here because we need this to keep boxing striving and to keep going forward. It's a wonderful, beautiful sport. Sometimes it's a little bit funky, but all in all, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful, beautiful spot. I want to thank all of you that came out to support and write your words down for this wonderful fight. As far as the fight is concerned, both sides say certain things, and all the talk will stop soon. Sadly, when the day gets here, it's between the individuals. It's a very cool economic award. When they step in the ring, who walks out, number one, we'll leave that up to them. Two things I just want to say and talk about. Yesterday, when someone from the press asked about Sergey Kovalev's and Andre Ward's last fight, I didn't really think about it that much to really answer the way I should have, but I will answer it this way. One fight does not define a fighter's career. That last fight for both, for both fighters, it was where it truly was a tune-up. This man's opponent was, they did what they were supposed to do. They both won convincingly and to make this fight happen here. So you get to leave it that way, and the reporter, I can't remember who it was, that asked that. But that, that's the answer to your question. One fight does not define a fighter's career. Number two is a question that Mr. Hunter has. And yes, brother, I, I do respect you and your fighter and your team. Uh, some things I do say is to get in someone's head, but when it all boils down to it, I do respect these, these people, because they're, they're very good people, wonderful gentlemen, and the whole team is, is, is very good. They're very professional. So, the answer question, his question was that in the last fight, it's a two-part question, he said I was there for a week. I would love to tell you that where you got your information from, it was bad information. I was there longer than two weeks. Longer than you said a week, longer than two weeks I was there. Longer than, longer than three weeks. So, whoever said I was there for a week, I'm glad they said that. It makes it look like we're a bad team. I love that. To answer your question about the, about the, the cohesiveness of our team, Whatever goes on in camp, whatever this, this agreement we may have that people say we have, I want you to remember this, all the writers out here. Come fight back. We left the same way that we came in, undefeated, and he wins every fight. He wins the way he's supposed to win it, he does everything that I ask of him. So, with that said, I look forward to November 19th. I'll see you there. Thank you very much. Well, the, at this time, let's bring up the undefeated, reigning and defending WBA, WBO, IBF light heavyweight champion of the world from Chelyabinsk, Russia, Danigas Badai, Sergei Crusher Kovalev. Hi, everybody. Uh, how are you? Glad to be here. Very nice, really. Uh, maybe even like two, three years ago, I didn't can imagine that I can get this level and fight under world and if you didn't box against the Olympic champion, gold medalist. And very big respect him for his uh, success in the pro in the amateur uh, career. He's re it's really uh, great uh, success. Uh, but right now we're facing each other and I should do proof that I'm a better. And also I would like to uh, thanks a lot to HBO and personally Peter Nelson, my promoter, Katie Dua and many of his promotions and Aegis Klimas and uh, to my sponsor Hubbard. <laughs> and also, uh, I, I really hope uh, that uh, our fight 
to be very clear and honest and to win the uh, best of us. Like, really, like, uh, this fight, uh, very excited and a little nervous because I never was on this level. This uh, paper is the highest level in the, uh, in the pro boxing. And uh, I'm very happy to be here and welcome <laughs> to the screens of TVs November 19th and uh, T-Mobile Arena. You, you will see a very really great fight. Thank you very much. God bless you.